So why wood fiber? Why, why did you go for wood fiber? I did about six years of research by going to loads of the big trade shows in London that were starting mm. to, you know, demonstrate. This is going back 20 years ago, I guess, mm. maybe, maybe 15. Out of the six panels, CLT, Mass Timber, all those different ones, they had a lot of strengths for a lot of mm. different situations. Mm. Um, some were, you know, super quick build time offsite, which then led to a super quick uh, prefab situation. Mm. But then the SIPS panels, there was then a question about the vapor permeability of the SIPS panels, because essentially using an EPS foam, mm. then it was with the mass timber or the CLT, if there was an issue that they didn't quite fit and you had to doctor them on site, it then led to it sometimes a visual issue, like the aesthetic mm. wasn't that mm. good because you had to cut it. Other times it was, it just took way too long and wasn't that economical. Mm. Um, and actually the wood fibre, in terms of the mindset and builders, and obviously my background being a builder, was it became a lot easier to introduce these materials to builders who are actually physically building the thing on site mm. because it wasn't that difficult. You know, it's one board and it all interlocks, no extra timbers, just screw straight through, mm. put it on. It wasn't too complex a move from where they were at. It's just a yeah. replacement for another product, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's like people know how to use, handle it. Said, ah, that's the way it works. Okay, I've done that before. Partly okay. for me, the historic aspect. So you mm. had the at that point, you had about 90 years of proven mm. science in the wood fiber. So mm. for me and the guys that I employed, we basically said, well, you know, we can we can rely on that. We can trust that this works. Mm. Um, so let's just start using it. And we straight away it was a just the way that you work with it on site, the, the mm. way that you, all the dust and the, the offcuts and the fibres that come off it when you cut it, they just essentially biodegrade into the ground, compost mm. it. So the whole thing just became a better way to build. So we just committed to it and went with it. So did you look to other materials as well, like sheep's wool, cork, uh, hemp? Um, so yeah. why, why in that sustainable range, why did you go for wood fibre? Why not sheep's wool? Uh, partly at uh, the time sheep tool wasn't readily available mm. um, hemp certainly wasn't readily available mm. uh, and some and to some degree still isn't in this part of the world so we have started mm. to offer the hemp as a, another part of our range mm. uh, but yeah the availability like uh, for me um, the reason I wouldn't go for sheep's wool is it's an animal product and it attracts mm. far more vermin than actually wood fiber or, or hemp my favorite of all is actually hemp because it's a weed from a growth perspective, like it grows super quick. You can have it as an in-between crop um, uh, in your fields. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't need a lot of water compared to like cotton or uh, other products. Uh, it's just super hard to work from a fiber perspective. Like yeah. a wood fiber, you can cut with your normal tools. Hemp, uh, you have to be a bit smarter about how to cut it and how to actually use it. And I haven't seen a dense uh, hemp boards yet. Like I have seen hemp OSB, but I haven't seen like the wood fiber board you're using right now in a hemp version. Uh, yeah. The in-between buttons, I've seen it, uh, but not for um, for something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's part of the innovation thing as well. That, like I said, you've got 90 years of proven science. Yes. So, it's, yeah. it's, so in one sense, we're at this weird junction. If you're not recreating the wheel, yeah. and yet in some way sustainable building and hemp and you know, prefabrication is sort of now creating a new version of a wheel, but yeah. in the wood fab, you've got an existing proven use. So it's a weird blend, I guess, of a few different yeah. things. So, so a fun fact, maybe uh, good to know for people that are a bit in the Passive House industry, when uh, Wolfgang Feist, the founder of Passive House, when he built his first house, uh, he used uh, a limestone as construction and then a foam insulation externally. And back in the day, that's now 30 years ago, they were not sure if the foam insulation works. So uh, they took the risks 30 years ago to say, um, we believe that it works, but we have no proof that it actually works. And they were really like nervous about that because it's a massive investment. Like the whole house has been uh, insulated with that foam insulation and then re-rendered over it. But luckily, uh, when they did the testing a few years back, uh, it actually worked. So they took the, the leap of faith in a way into the material and then it actually worked. So I found that really interesting that when they started with Passive House, the first house, that they actually were really unsure if it actually works or not. There were a lot of, uh, a lot of things they were not 100% sure, but pretty much everything has been proven to be right.